Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Senza Tempo Connie Corso. So, I'm here with the babies doing a little pup date for you guys. Um, the puppies have grown exponentially. And so, um, she has officially been having a hard time keeping up with nursing. And so, which is, you know, to be expected because as you can see, um, they're big enough that each one of them will drain her and, um, well, each one of them will drain one nipple and, um, and so only really the strong ones are getting it. And I do separate, I do kind of like, um, move some puppies off and things like that. And, um, what sucks is that the collars that I bought, they said they, um, they said they delivered them. No, uh, uh lay down right now. Lay down now. Trinity, lay down now. Woman, so she's about tired of nursing. Um, I think she can probably, like, anybody who's ever nursed knows that you can practically feel them drain the life out of you <laughs> when you're nursing. And she is just, like, so done with it. Which is actually very normal. Um... Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. We got a puppy in here somewhere. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's the puppy? Where's the puppy? There we go. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. Somebody was getting laid on. But I got him. Yeah, she's also been getting bad about that, too. It's it's, it's almost like she, she does it on purpose. She's trying to get rid of them, I swear. Um, because she was so good about not laying on them. And now... And I know she feels it. I know she hears it. There's no way she doesn't. But, um, like, just then. But she will just lay there. Um, but anyway. They are big. Um, they went, they, they've gone through a growth spurt. They're all pretty chunky because, like I said, I've been stepping in. And I've been um, bottle feeding. There was two puppies I cannot get to bottle feed. They will not do it. And, um... I was really frustrated with it because they, you know, they needed to. And um, they, like I said, they all blend in so much that it's hard to identify who's who and what's what at this point. And um, I will say I'm fixing to go to my mailbox because um, I reordered those collars and they're supposed to be in today. It said that they were delivered today. And so my idea is to have a journal um, where I write down which puppies will take a bottle, which puppies will not take a bottle, as well as writing down every day a schedule of who I fed um, and how much and all that good stuff. But for the puppies that wouldn't eat um, off the bottle, and today I kind of came in, and what I do is I kind of pick the skin up like this, and if it doesn't go down quickly like that one, then I know that they're not getting enough. Oh, hold on. Um, so, like this puppy. See, well, that one's actually... Um, there's some that are... Yeah, so that one's better. It's harder to tell with that one because he's... Anyway, it's hard to tell whenever their necks are kind of scrunched up anyway. But whenever the... It's one way you can tell about dehydration is you can pick up the skin and see how... How quickly the skin settles back down. The more dehydrated you are, the slower it happens. And so I noticed that even though they weren't looking like some of them, you could see a little bit of skinniness, but for the most part, they were all looking okay. Um, but I could tell that they weren't getting enough. And so that's whenever I kind of kicked into high gear recently with bottle feeding, um, because I could see they, they hit this growth spurt a couple days ago and you could just tell that they were just not getting enough. And so I, um, so I've been bottle feeding the ones that will, the ones that will not, I've been trying to make sure that they stay on her, but once again, it's hard because they all look alike and they have similar markings. So it's, it's almost impossible to know exactly which one you can get the poop in a, in a minute. It's not important right now. So one of them went poop right there and, and she probably can smell it, wants to get to it, but she's a very clean mom. But, um, so anyway, so 
I made a, a mash for the two that would not eat, uh, would not take the bottle today. And it worked really well. I was very happy with it. And, um, and so, and they're, they're very close to three weeks, which is typically whenever puppies will start eating this, the, um, solid foods anyway. And so, you know, it's, I don't, I don't, there's no weirdness there, but I took some wet food and I mashed it up with some hot water and some baby formula. And I made it into, uh, you know, like a, like a, like a soup. And, um, and I was able to get those puppies to lick that up. They wouldn't take it in any kind of bottle or anything like that, but I just let them lick it up and, and they, um, they were totally cool with that. So they got nice full bellies from that and just, just trying to make sure that everybody is good to go. And then from now on, I'm going to just keep going with my bottle feeding. Um, for those of you that, um, have never bottle fed, um, this is the one I use. It's a little dirty cause I literally just got done feeding, but, um, this is the best bottle in my opinion. Um, I know it looks dirty, but for whatever reason, these puppy formulas, they have a lot of like, I guess there's some kind of oil. I think it's like an oil in it that makes it look like that after you're done feeding. But I did feed one puppy right before I started filming. And um, I'm feeding this. I'm, I'm finishing this off. But then I also have a um, puppy formula that I purchased from Animal Revival. And it's a huge bag of it. And so I've also been using that. That one I find is has more of that greasiness to it. So literally like I have to wash the bottle between like every, I would say two feedings. I have to like literally take a sponge, go in there and wash it out. Even though I'm feeding like one puppy after the next. Um, but, um, everybody's taking the bottle for the most part. I only have a couple that are not, I want to say like maybe three or four that are not. Um, and I'm still letting them nurse off of her cause obviously mother's milk is the best. But in the meantime, I do have to make sure to keep everybody, you know, going and, and good. Um, so, you know, there's only so much you can do whenever you have this many puppies or as far as the mother is concerned. Especially when you're dealing with a large breed dog like this. I mean, it just gets to the point where it's just not, you know, it's just not, it's just not even the way nature intended. You know what I mean? Like wolves do not have this many babies. Um, she doesn't even have, um, enough nipples for all these babies. So that's just the reality of the situation. So, um, but you know, everyone's doing really well. They're all kind of starting to come alive. Uh, really cool. The head types on here look really good so far from what I'm seeing. I've even seen some structure start peeking through some nice rears. Um, but the head types, it's so funny. Like there's a couple of them that look just like Mad Mortigan. I mean, just like him. And I'm super excited about that because I love Mad Mortigan's head. Um, can you let her out? She probably needs to go potty. Um, also, you know, for those of you that didn't catch the video yesterday, Nirvana is coming home tomorrow. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am. I'm literally ecstatic. I'm so excited. I've missed her so much. Um, and so Savannah's going to come with me and, um, she'll just do her online schooling on the way there. And, um, Are we going in the evening or going no, we're going to leave. Um, yeah, we'll leave like in the afternoon. Shouldn't I be on break by then? No, mm-mm. And so anyway, so she's going to film the reunion. And so anyway, that'll be cool for you guys. Um, but I'm just over the moon. So, 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 so excited. Like I miss my baby girl. Um, it's been great to have her out representing my kennel, representing, you know, everything that I've worked hard to achieve, but like baby girl got to come home. You know what I'm saying? Also, I have really great news. Um, on top of all of the awesomeness that Nirvana has achieved, um, she also at this point and keep in mind. So this, this tally, this accumulation is only calculating from the last date of October. Okay. Now, those of you may know Nirvana started showing in October. So that was her first month. So within her first month, 
which should tell you something about how many people are actually out there showing their dogs. Um, within her first month, she got to the, um, number 30. So she's one of the top 30 dogs, Corso in America right now. Um, I talked with one of my mentors, she saw it and she said that judging by how well Nirvana did, um, recently, and the fact that those points haven't been tallied, she goes, there's a really good chance, not a guarantee, but a really good chance that she'll actually be within the top 10 of the breed by the end of, I guess it would be January. If they're, if they're calculating, I mean, well, they're months behind right now. We're literally in December and it's in October. So once they calculate all of her points, she should be in the top 10 of the breed, which is like really super cool because she's only been showing for what October November December three months um so yeah like really 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 um top female I um I'm just gonna keep working with her whenever she gets home I'm gonna take her hiking I'm gonna do you guys are gonna be a part of that I'm gonna do a lot of training and um physical activity with her and stuff to get her ready for Westminster and we're going to hopefully get her conditioned enough and muscled up enough that my handler will think that she's mature enough to um, compete well in what at Westminster. I'm also going to work with stacking her a lot more. She's gotten really um, bad um, during her stacks um, from what I've noticed uh, of what's called posting, which is where they lean back in the stack um, or they make their rear really straight. And, um, it kind of like lifts the rear end some and it messes up the top line. So with these dogs, you have to, um, you have to get them to lean forward in the stack. And if you don't do that, it messes it up. And so, um, she just hasn't been doing that. I don't know if she's just kind of done like tired of showing or whatever it is, but I'm going to really try to work with her a lot on that, help her build some muscle. So it's not problematic for her to even do that. So that hopefully by the time that she gets to Westminster, she's a finely tuned machine and she's able to really represent herself as well as possible um, at Westminster. So um, I talked with um, Christina with Sangue, the place where I bought Zoe from, and um, we talked about the fact that um, we just neither one of us think that she's really mature enough at this point to go to Westminster. Um, or really even to start showing yet. She just needs some time. And so we're going to, you know, basically let her just mature out. So I probably am not going to have anything in the ring for a little bit while I wait for my dogs to mature. It's a tough one, but I had to kind of, Reese and I were really talking about it. And both of us agreed that, um, you know, when you have a really nice dog, you can achieve a lot. You can champion a dog. You could even potentially grand champion that dog. But if you really want to go far with a dog, like with what I've been trying to do with Nirvana, which she has done, make no mistake, she has, she's punched way above where, you know, where she's at, like way above. She's, she's in there with the big dogs, with older dogs, campaign dogs, all that stuff. And she's, and she's just punching way above her weight class. But, um, m not all dogs are going to be able to do that. You know, even, even she didn't do it all the time. And she would have a lot better odds if she was uh, a mature dog while she was doing this. Um, so what I'm going to do from now on is basically not show my dogs until they're a little bit older. That way, um, you know, that way they have time to mature. Um, and so probably I'll start showing dogs, depending upon the dog, probably any, like usually I'll probably put them out maybe at a year old. Um, I probably won't do any more puppy showing just because like I said, it's, it's bad on their development because they spend a lot of time kenneled. And the last thing you want to do is take a puppy and put them in a kennel for a lot because it breaks them down in the feet and the pasterns. Um, and so I would rather just let them, you know, grow up, let them get all that most of that maturity out the way and um, let them really reach their full potential. That way they can go out and they can just, you know, rock out in the ring and not have any of the physical stuff that goes along with it. I think that even a mature dog will eventually start to have some issues in that, in that way. 
Um, I know that Reese and I both originally, we kind of, um, you know, we weren't like being rude or anything, but when you look at dogs, you know, you, you're looking at faults, right? And so we would, we would look and make observations about dogs' feet or their pasterns. And now that I know, um, what effect it has as far as showing is concerned, I'm less, um, concerned about that when I see a campaigned dog. I think that it just kind of happens to them, unfortunately. And I think it's probably important to maybe do when you're campaigning a dog to actually maybe do three months on and do like, you know, a couple months off to allow them to recuperate and get a lot of exercise and all that stuff and then put them back out again. Otherwise you really run the risk of, of breaking down their feet and their pasterns. So, um, so anyway, but I guess, so anyway, um, I guess that's all I got to say about that. So just wanted to give you guys a pup date. I'd been asked. Um, so hope you guys are having a good day and, um, I'll talk at you later. Bye.